I'm gonna show you my favorite warm-up guitar exercise. This is the exact warm-up exercise that I do almost every time that I pick up the guitar to practice. Anytime I have a practice session, but I miss doing this technique, this guitar exercise as my warm-up, it just feels off. Uh, it doesn't feel like a good session. I can feel it more straining on my arm. So this exact warm-up is a refined and an evolved version of a very simple and very common single note guitar exercise that you've possibly done before or some portion of before. Uh, and it's a super effective uh, approach for improving our technique and getting us warmed up with single note lead guitar playing because we're going to exercise every single left hand finger permutation. You can do this warm up with any type of guitar. You can do it with any right hand technique, whether you're using a pick or fingers. And so it works for everybody. First, I'll just describe the whole warm up exercise. Then I'll demonstrate the whole thing in time, showing you notation and tabs of it on the screen as I play it. That section will serve also as a great segment to come back to and practice along with if you want to adopt this exercise for yourself my demonstration can be a great benchmark to work up to and to test yourself with uh, playing along with me and i'll do it at 60 beats per minute playing 16th notes then i'm going to list for you a number of individual techniques and individual things that i might focus on independently while playing through the exact same exercise this is super super important this is one of the secret things about good practice after that i will share with you how i take this warm up to the next level so if you so choose you can turn this warm up into a very advanced left hand technique exercise and lastly i'll share the number one pitfall that holds people back when doing this exercise or any technique related to this uh, there's one big thing that really is something you really really should not do and in order to play lighter and smoother and more easily, we're gonna talk about what that is as our last point. So let's just talk through what this is first. It's so simple. It's fingers one, two, three, four on frets one, two, three, four on the lowest string, and then the next string up one, two, three, four. So this is the version that many, many people have come across. You may have played something like that before. And then we're gonna go up a fret when we get to the highest string and finish that off one, two, three, four, shift up a fret and then go down four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Okay, that alone is a great exercise for years. I just did that, but I eventually mutated it into something uh, even more helpful. And it's been amazing for my technique. After, when we shift up again, every time we shift, we're going to change our finger permutation. So we did one, two, three, four. Well, now we wanna do one, two, four, three. And there's a logical order, but I'll just list for you on the screen what finger permutation we're on. We did one, two, three, four, then one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three. And then you do the reverse of that, just like coming back down. So you're gonna go four, three, one, two, et cetera, for all of the finger permutations. So we're gonna shift up again and do one, three, two, four. And then the reverse of that. Now I went all the way here to tell you at the sixth fret, this is very important because on, on, I do this on the classical guitar as well, and you can't just keep going up. On the sixth fret, I don't shift after that and I just turn back around. So now I'm gonna go one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two. And of course this takes a while to get used to it, but once you do, it's amazing for your fingers. Then I'm gonna shift down and start going this way. Four, two, one, three, four, two, one, three. Uh, and then I'm gonna shift down and continue down. So I'm going up to the, the sixth fret position and then staying there to go back up and then rotating back down. By the time you get back to the first fret position, uh, we've done all of the finger permutations that start with one, and you'll see them all on the screen and I'll demonstrate through all of them. So you'll hear all that in time with the notation and everything. And after that, we have to, to get all the combinations. We're gonna go through those fret positions again, shifting, but everything starting on two and everything reverse of starting on two. So on the way back down, it's everything starting on finger three. On the way up, it's everything starting on finger two. And just think of it in terms of what's a logical order. Well, okay, we're starting on two. So what's everything starting from two to one? So two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four. That's the first one. And then the reverse of that. Okay, you shift up and then we're going two, one, four, three. And as you shift up again, you'll do, oh, two, three, one, four, et cetera. And you'll see all those on the screen. You can study it and, and get these down. Yeah, it takes time to wrap our head around, wait, what finger combination, whatever, but it's so worth it to get used to that. I do it, like I said, if I don't do this warm up, I feel um, just like everything is 
not going as smoothly as I want it to, and I start feeling it in my arm and my, my wrist in a way that I don't want to. So it's been good to me, and I want to share it with you and hope that it's good for you as well. So now I'm going to play the entire thing all the way through at, a, at 60 beats per minute, and I'm playing as 16th notes, and this is the practice along section if you want to adopt this and if you want to come back and warm up with me um, whenever you feel like it or when you practice. I do this warm up with students in real lessons sometimes. We practice together and I had a classical teacher that did that with me. He's like, okay, we're going to go through this warm up together so you can kind of follow the guide, the tone, the, the accents of the way a teacher plays it. Um, so I found that helpful for me. Um, if you don't want to use it that way, perfectly fine, but I'll show you all the notation and tabs on the screen as we do it. So let's jump in. Here we go, 60 beats per minute, the full exercise. One, two, three, four. So if you hear someone warming up like that, doing some kind of exercise, you might think, that's it, that's their practice. They're executing, they're playing what I hear. But the real practice is happening internally. What are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? What are we working on trying to accomplish? What's our actual goal with anything we're playing? So it might sound a certain way, but you might be thinking of all kinds of different things. So you can only focus on one thing at a time. <clears throat> so once you can play something and have room, once it's a habit enough that you have room to be able to think of anything else, you wanna start trying to combine other desirable things. So one of the first things I do, and if I'm doing this, I very consciously, Take a big breath while I'm doing it. And I'll do this without a metronome, and I'll do it also with a metronome at different different speeds. I'll do different right hand articulations, that kind of thing. But being relaxed and breathing, just breathing alone, I will be trying to think of that while executing this and staying relaxed. Another thing is maybe keeping the wrist as straight as possible or some sort of left hand uh, positioning. So maybe that's what you're thinking about at any given time. Um, being in time or not. So if you're with the metronome, you might be thinking, can I just be as on time, as in, as on the beat as possible, uh, as locked in as I can? That takes a lot of focus. So yes, you have to be able to play it. And then you might be thinking, I'm I want to be playing in time. You might be thinking keeping your fingers close to the fretboard is a huge one. I did a video on this recently. I'll put a link to that in the description, being not having your, your fingers fly off the fretboard as you play. So that's something you could be focusing on. I also have a 
how to work on playing in time better a video. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Um, and I have a video, my, my first lesson video I ever posted on this channel is about what I call the focus rotation method, which is exactly what we're talking about here. What are you actually focusing on when you're, when you're practicing? And that can rotate. You don't have to focus on one thing the whole time, the whole exercise. You can be really thinking, okay, am I relaxed in my right hand? Or how's my alternate picking? Am I doing that accurately? And it can shift over in a moment to how's my left hand. But you can only really ever think of, you know, focusing on something that is one thing at a time. So this is a big part of quality practicing. So another thing you might focus on is just how clean are my notes? Am I playing clean? Are there buzzes? Am I getting them all accurately? And then a big thing that I do is I'll, I'll work on different right hand finger combinations. Like, okay, I'm gonna go through the whole thing to warm up, but I'm gonna to try to play with my thumb alternating with different fingers or different combinations there. So just a little introduction into uh, that concept of focus rotation. Check out my video on, video on that. There's a link in the description um, if you wanna learn more about that. If you wanna do this exact exercise as a super advanced kind of hardcore left hand technique training, simply do the exact thing all the permutations in that order as slurs, where you pluck the first note, and everything else is slurs. So pull off for these. I often do this without a metronome, so I can really focus on how clean am I doing it. Super hard. So now I'm going to do this permutation on the third fret. One, two, four, three, all slurs. So you can see that's pretty intense. As I'm doing this, like I didn't like the tone up there, so I'm like, ah, can I get a clean pull off with a tone that I like? And just depends on what I'm focusing on in the moment. Um, so all of the exact same thing as slurs is super, uh, super intense, really good left hand exercise. Don't hurt yourself. Don't you know? Don't go there if your strength and flexibility is not ready for it technique wise. But when it is, um, that's really the next level. I still practice it normal, and then I, I usually practice it with slurs after that as part of my warm up every time I play. Here's that final tip, and this is crucially, crucially important. This is what you don't want to do, and you don't really, you don't want to do this anytime you're playing, but this exercise is a great time to work on this, and that is that you do not want to hold your fingers down after you play the notes. You don't want to hold any notes down that you're not actually using or needing, so don't keep those fingers down. That causes extra tension, that makes it clunky, that makes it hard to get around. I'm lifting off the tension and the pressure. Obviously on the way down, you have to, but I'll just do this one again, because that's this is the one where people keep them all the way down. Don't do that at all. As soon as I play the next finger, this is up. I'm not lifting it way off, I'm just lifting off the pressure. So it might look like it's touching the string still, and it might even be touching the string still, but it's not pushing down. So I'll do it kind of exaggerated to show you. That's how we keep things light and smooth, and that's just always, don't have a note down that you're not using that you don't need. As your single note technique playing gets better, a perfect supplement for this exercise is my top three pentatonic patterns PDF. It's just a simple single page PDF with three exercises on it. It's a free download. There's a link in the top of the description to grab it, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns. And you can test out your technique, see how it's feeling with those scale patterns. Uh, they're just tasty and really fun. And I play with those and warm up with them and use them in my, in my improvisations all the time. Let me know if you have a warm up that's your favorite that you rely on that helps you out. Let us all know. I would love to hear what it is and other people reading the comments would love to hear what it is. It might be helpful for someone else. So if you have a warm up exercise, let us know in the comments. That would be great. And if you don't, are you going to either adopt this one that I showed you in this or commit to finding something else to warm up with? Um, big, big, big proponent of making sure we warm up. It just makes a huge difference. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes I skip it just like everybody. Like I said, it never feels like the same uh, type of practice session when I don't warm up. It just doesn't feel as good. So having something that works for us is really important. Let us know in the comments if uh, you have something or if you need to find something or if you're going to do this one. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is on some of my best practice habit and practice psychology practice strategy advice. I love that stuff. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.